Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Fall Blau, Army Group South, June to December 1942. This is a game designed by Greg Blanchett and published by Compass Games. East Front, as you know, is one of my favorite theaters and I've been wanting to get a hold of this for a while. And now with the upcoming Kharkov battles, I said now's the time to get it because that game is not only going to be a standalone, but it will also expand this game further, giving you a fuller experience of Army Group South. Today I'm going to share a look inside with you. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. Fall Blau is a game simulating the 1942 campaigns of Army Group South to take the Caucasus and Stalingrad. The game uses a chit pull system for determining strengths of certain units and provides a limited fog of war. This is a monster game with few rules, medium complexity, and high solitaire suitability. The basic turn sequence is classic I Go You Go, which consists of movement and combat with possible attacks for mechanized units during movement. Planes are simplified through the use of air points. As the campaign progresses, the Axis player is constantly hampered with supply limitations. The supply support system is tied closely with combat and restricts the Axis player from being able to attack everywhere at once. Free and historical setup options are available and automatic victory goals based on Hitler's whim. There are nine scenarios in the game. Six scenarios which use a portion of a single map and three major campaigns which use multiple maps. And you can see here an example of the maps and the counters. And it is for two to eight players with the campaigns as well as solitaire. Unit scale, divisions, corps, brigades, and battalions. Map scale, one hex is six and a half miles or about 10 kilometers. Time scale, one turn equals three days. Playing time is between one and 50 hours. Complexity is a five out of 10. Solitaire suitability is eight out of 10. And you get 980 half inch counters as well as three 34 by 22 inch maps along with two smaller ones. So let's take a look inside and see what you get. All right, we get our D10. It's like a sheet of errata counters, just a couple of rows actually. And then the counter errata rule book. The player aids, and there are a bunch of player aids. Counters, three and a half sheets worth. And our maps. So let's set up the maps and take a closer look at the game. And we'll take a look at the maps that come with the game, and there are several. This is the northern section of the map. All three of them together will give you the Army Group South area of operations. And you can see they're broken down by Army Groups. 40th Army area, 21st Army area, 28th, 38th, 9th, and at the very top you have the 13th Army area. And at the top you've got Livni and Zdansk, all the way to Novokopersky, and then Izium over on the bottom left. That gives you the area that is covered on the one map here, Map A. The top right we have the Maximum Soviet Rail, Weather Table, Attrition Table, as well as the Terrain Effects Chart. And we move on to map B, which has the same army area breakdown that we saw on the first map. 37th, 12th, 18th, 56th army areas. And also Izim is the top left. So there's going to be some overlap as you'd expect for the maps. You're going to lay one on top of the other as you build out the entire map. Stalino here and then Stalingrad over to the far right. Beautiful maps. I love the detail on them. They look really, really nice. Then we get to map C, which covers a both beautiful and barren area. As you can see, the steps over to the right, and then the mountain range down here, which is going to carry over to a couple of other maps, which we're going to look at here in a moment. But beautifully done. I really like the graphics here on this. And also, you've got the passes that you can get through the mountain ranges here, so that way you can move your troops through. Very clearly delineated, very easy to read. Then we get to the last two map sections for the big map, which is map K. This is just a little strip. It's going to go over here on the side, and you're going to be matching it up here to extend out the mountain range all the way out to the Chernoy Moor. And then you also have map G, which is going to extend this down further, the steps as well as the mountain ranges all the way down. And then you're going to have your train effects chart, Soviet naval loss table, and then the Caucasus zone special cases. And when you put them all together, this is what you're going to see. This is directly from the rule book, which explains to you how to lay out all the maps when you're going to be playing the grand campaign. But again, remember, you're not going to use all of the maps for every scenario. Most of these scenarios are going to be one to two map scenarios. And there's even a special trio map, which we're going to take a look at now. 
The TRIO map is a special map which can be used in place of map B. This is for the greater Stalingrad area. So you can see this is a much smaller map than these other maps. So very easily manageable on pretty much everybody's table, I think. You could just dig right down into the action near Stalingrad and not have to worry about having a large map on the table. Next, we'll take a look at the player aids that come with the game. This is the turn record track, and it will give you all the information you need for each of the turns. And at the bottom is an explanation of what all those bits of information are inside of each of the turns on the turn track. And on the back, we have the turn tracks for each of the individual scenarios. On the next sheet, we have the victory point and replacement and support tracks, the support table, the Caucasus campaign support table, and then notes on withdrawals, as well as the Hitler directive chit. Then we have the Soviet command and control table, weather table, and the Soviet army commitment numbers, as well as maximum Soviet rail, and then the star optionals here. More information for withdrawals, and then the Caucasus zone special cases in the middle. Then we have the terrain effects chart, which lists out all the different types of terrain and their associated costs for movement and combat, as well as any notes that are applicable. On the back, we have the counter breakdown explanation, as well as the victory points for each of the cities in the game, as well as their hex numbers, so easy to find them. Then we have the quick reference sheet, which explains movement, combat effects, advanced procedure, out of supply, and then the different weather effects, mountain snow, freeze, Volga Freeze, the Soviet Counteroffensive, and then the Soviet Commitment Procedure at the bottom. Then we have the Prepared Assault Table. And on the opposite side, we have the Mobile Assault Table, Attrition, and Soviet Naval Loss Tables, along with all associated modifiers. Then we have Holding Boxes for Air, which are available for sortie in different zones. More Holding Boxes. And then the same for the Germans, giving you a breakdown of all the available for sortie units in each of the zones. Next, we have the setup cards for all the scenarios. For the Axis, we have the Fallblau campaign set up on the front. Then on the back, we have the Caucasus campaign set up. Then we have the Soviets to the Gates of Stalingrad set up and reinforcement schedule. And on the back, we have the Soviets set up for Operation Uranus. The Axis set up for Operation Uranus. And then the axe is set up for to the gates of Stalingrad. Then we have the big fold out for the axis reinforcements for the Fallblau campaign. Clearing the Don Bend. Then the Soviet set up for the Fallblau campaign. As well as the setup and reinforcements for the Soviets for the Caucasus campaign. And the Soviet set up for the Fallblau campaign. Then the Soviet set up for the drive to Varnezh. And clearing the Don Ben and Nalchik or Janiski. And lastly, the Soviet reinforcements for the Fallblau campaign. Now we'll take a look at the counters that come with the game. On the left hand side, we see the German units in gray and finishing off at the top right in gray. And then below that, we have Slovak units, Hungarian, Romanian, and Italian units. And you'll notice on these uh, units here, we've got these A10s, A6s that you see here. The A is the combat strength, and what you're going to do is you're going to be drawing a strength chit to determine the variable combat strength of that unit when you go into combat. And I like that variability of the strength factors because you never know what it's going to be. You can't just simply math out every combat. It adds a good bit of friction, and it makes you tense each time you go into combat. So that's what I like about that variability. On the next sheet, we have the Soviet guards, as well as the Soviet regular troops, and then at the top are the headquarters units, same as we saw on the German sheet. And on the third sheet, we have the remainder of the Soviet forces, as well as some administrative markers. On the right-hand side, you'll see these are the strength chits. Those will be drawn before combat, so that way you know what the strength factor is for each unit. And then on the last half sheet, we have the remainder of the administrative counters. And we'll take a look at the rules. This is a 32-page full-color rulebook. The inside of the front cover, we have the table of contents, which lists out all the rules and their associated page numbers. Get into the introduction, and then we have the full map layout. When you're going to lay out all the maps for the campaign, this is how you're going to lay them out, which I already showed you earlier in the video. But remember, you're not going to need all these maps for all the scenarios. This is only for the campaign. The other scenarios, you're going to be using one or two maps. So no need to worry and think you need that giant table. Only when you're going to play the campaign game. And we have the key game terms, hex ownership, zones of control, 
unit type classes, strength chits, unit steps, all those things we talked about like with the strength chits. Remember, you draw that to determine the combat factor of your unit before combat. Command range, armor band, and then we get to the counter examples, and then the sequence of play starts on page five. And that's all listed out for you, and then it's broken down in steps. Air power, stacking, zone of control, illustrated example of zone of control, supply, general supply states, pocket attrition, support, when to determine support, how to determine support, and then you get your full support. And then lack of full support, then you have movement, all your procedures for the different types of movement, tactical movement, strategic movement, rail movement, sea movement, and then effects of terrain on movement. And then we have special tactical movements, tactical movement example over here with the illustrated example on page 12. Then we have prepared assaults, terrain effects on combat, attack determination example here, and another combat example on the next page, encirclement bonus, combat resolution, retreats, advances after combat, and then we get to the Soviet command delay and commitment procedure. Soviet special abilities like the Soviet counteroffensive and NKVD recruits. Dynamic units, headquarters units, German breakdown regiments, and then you also have optional Soviet command and control rule. Commandos, Soviet Black Sea Fleet. Get to replacements and then reinforcements. Man-made terrain features like fortified zones. You have the Stalingrad zone and the optional FZ rule here, pontoon bridges, and then unfinished railroads, Kuman land bridge. Then we get to the environmental effects like freeze, mountain snow, and mud, adding a little bit of variability to it. And then we have the designer's notes on page 19. So the rules end on page 19. They start on page 5. About 14 pages worth of rules. There's a good amount of text here, but it doesn't look like it's going to be super difficult to understand this game at all. And we've got a few pages of the designer's notes. Then they have the credits on page 22, and then we get to the scenarios. Attack of the 1st Panzer Army, that's a one-map scenario. Drive to Voronezh, also another one-map scenario. Clearing of the Don Bend, this is going to use map B. The Nalchik, Origin Akidze operation, this is going to use map G. So you're only going to use one map there on that one. Then to the gates of Stalingrad, and then the multi-map campaigns, Fall Blau, this is where you're going to use all of your maps and you're going to need that big amount of space. We have some OKH options here. Historical July campaign, the Caucasus campaign. Then we have the reference list. And then the assault procedure is all broken down for you. And then we're at the back of the rule book where we've got the basic sequence of play listed out. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Fall Blau, Army Group South, June to December 1942. This is a game designed by Greg Blanchett and published by Compass Games. Any East Front fan that is like me, you're going to want to have a copy of this game. This has got a lot of game in this box. And I love these big, beautiful maps. They're going to create one giant, big, beautiful map for the campaign. But remember, you only need to use one or two maps for the majority of the scenarios. The campaign game is the only time that you'll use all of the maps. But look at the components here. I mean, it's just top-notch quality and the game itself, 15 pages of the rules. Looks like it's gonna be real interesting, but not a lot to grok. 15 pages is not too bad. You've got all these player aids that'll help you out and just everything is just fantastic with this game. On top of that, you've got Kharkov Battles that Greg's also doing that's coming out very soon. That will be a standalone game, but it can also expand this game out. So if you haven't got a copy of this, get one now. And the other thing about getting a copy now is, this is now out of stock at Compass, and it will be out of print when all of the copies are off the market. So make sure you get to your local game store or your online game store and get a copy if you're looking for it, because when this is, when this is out, it's out. So don't miss out on this one for sure. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.